to the show. Triple candidates from minor parties, uh, the, the ones we had earlier today, have very similar platforms or a lot of common interests. We have two now that diametrically oppose. For in Melbourne, we have Jason Toison Machine for the Australian Equality Party. That would be marriage equality. Welcome to the show, Jason. Hi, Jane. How are you doing? Good, Dave. And here uh, with me, Mella Hall, who's representing the, who's running for the Senate, I should say, Jason's running for the Senate in Victoria. Uh, Mella Hall is running for the Christian Democrats here in New South Wales. We just heard from Glenn Drury that Christian Democrats have got a good chance. So. I heard. That would be a bit daunting. <laughs> what number are you on? Number one. Well, oh, there you go. So, I keep saying that people <laughs> haven't got a chance. You never know. Let's hear a bit about you then. Uh, your background, how you got to that epiphany. So, you want to be a politician? Uh, my background is commas, I have a degree in commas, and it's actually in, in insolvency, so that's a really interesting that area. That would be a problem. <laughs> so let's hope that the Australia doesn't go bankrupt. No, it won't. Uh, and legal, so uh, I manage a legal firm. How I got into, per se, politics, I was actually just a community activist, someone that thought that the residents uh, did not have a voice. They were voiceless, and me being tiny but loud, thought, I can do this, and I can take people with me, and they followed, and they wanted me to, to take their banner and say, well, Nella, can you fight this issue for us? And of course, the issue is amalgamation in, in uh, that was your South Wales. Jason, you were a uh, Christian minister. Yes, I was, your name when I, was, yeah, I was ordained when I was 24. But when I came out as a gay man at 28, the church weren't very happy with that. So then I went into teaching, psychology, and I've been a marriage celebrant for the last uh, 12 or 13 years and performed over a thousand weddings and funerals and namings. And you married your partner in Canada? You have a Yes, son in 2004. Yeah, yeah, so we were married non-legally in 2000. We've been waiting 16 years to be legally married here and we were married legally in Toronto in 2004. And our son, who's now 10, was born in 2006. What made you want to be a politician? Uh, I think I always um, wanted to be Prime Minister as a young oh, See, I was saying that there were no kids who actually said growing up, gee, I want to be a politician. You did. Yeah, I don't mind leading. I, but I, you know, I don't think I'll necessarily be Prime Minister, but I would really love to represent the million plus Australians who are LGBTIQ, who, um, I'm not treated equally in Australia right now, and I'd really be honoured to have that voice and to agitate for change inside the federal parliament. As you know, we don't have marriage equality in Australia, and we don't have, actually, we have a policy platform of 23 areas that takes over 43 pages, and we don't have equality for, you know, the gay, lesbian, transgender, intersex, and bisexual people in Australia, for women. Women are not, are not equal either, and we just believe that everyone in Australia deserves to be at the same starting line, and... I think my evangelical minister experience has actually motivated me to start a party that centres its um, key principles around fairness, human rights and equality. Okay, because all those things are great and you, you stand for Christian Democrats, obviously stand for family, Christian principles, all sounds great. You couldn't, you couldn't not the worthiness of the issues or your beliefs. What is it about the Christian Democrats that you, you said you wouldn't be, you were an activist? Why? What was it about their policy that you didn't go and join one of the major parties? I felt that their policies were fair also, and they were for the family, for Australia, and for the most vulnerable. You don't think Labor and Liberal are anti-Australia? I mean, they're not really anti-Australian, are they? they? They'd say they're for people. They're not anti-Australian, but for the Christian Democratic Party, it is for pro-family, it is for the protection of children, it is for supporting marriage, it is for getting a, a federal corruption watchdog, so it's no, no change to superannuation, it is no uh, cuts to Medicare, no cuts to education, and looking after the most vulnerable. And the difference with uh, the Christian Democratic parties is that we do have 47 candidates across New South Wales in the electorate. We are 35 years old, we've been around for a long time, and we do have uh, Reverend Nile and Paul Green in the Legislative Council in New South Wales that have been gatekeepers 
to the uh, Christian values in New South Wales. Yes, yeah, so you're a known entity. Now, Jason, being a micro party, and even though you say that there's a lot of other equality issues, it is pretty well a single issue, though. There might be different areas of it, but you are really narrowing down to that thing that means a lot to you. But it also keeps you out of the, probably keeps you out of getting a seat in the end. Why didn't you feel you could do it by joining a party? I mean, the Labor Party, you would think. I mean, isn't it better to work from within if you really want to get uh, same-sex marriage up? Isn't it really about changing the views of, the, of Liberal or Labor? Well, three years ago when we started here in Victoria, we had a Liberal government and there was no push for LGBTI equality in Victoria and federally after Ms Abbott was um, made Prime Minister it was obvious to us that there'd be no changes and so the past three years we've actually put together a complete platform that's marriage equality is just one paragraph of about 43 pages of things that need to happen for those million plus people to be fully included in Australian society and we think it's really important and already in Victoria with the state Labor government they have actually enacted five or six of our key policies including a gender and sexuality commissioner Rowena Allen is now doing a really good job in that role and that's our policy in real life. We have an equality minister in the state Labor government that did not exist when we started and now we have talk with Labor get in of having a federal gender and sexuality commissioner. So actually you can actually do change, bring change by not just sitting around whinging and participating in the democratic process and I think it's really important that more Australians actually engage in politics and stand up for what matters and I have been frustrated and it's been obvious that the federal government, that's where we want to get in the Senate in the, in the federal government, is not progressing anything with, um, for LGBTI people right now. And the plebiscite that potentially will happen later this year is going to be very harmful and actually cause quite a few people to actually lose their life through the mental distress that they're going to receive. So actually, I think it's the other way around. I think it's really important that we all have to start somewhere. Every party started somewhere small, but we wouldn't call ourselves a micro party. We're running seven candidates at this election, our first election. We've raised over $150,000 of funds for our journey, and we have a full policy platform, including things like a human rights charter that we think are very important, and we are centrist. So we really love, what we love the friends and the other parties who've done things for us, we really believe that equality, fairness, and human rights are, are missing from the political conversation right now, but we do know that those things have increased in the conversation since we've existed. This, and particularly that's happened in Victoria. Now, I'm listening to that, and a lot of people think that this is an inevitable change. The Christian Democrats, as you say, you're a broad party, you've been around, you have a, a lot of uh, different policy platforms. Mm. But right at the moment, Jason's right, marriage equality is a, a, a really hot button issue. Do you find that when you're campaigning, the people see you as the opposite to him, you're the one standing against it? Absolutely. So it is a big issue when you're at campaign. It is a big issue and travelling New South Wales, one thing that resonates is they feel like they are the voiceless and they need a voice. Who's they? The Christian Democrats? Yes. Uh, Christians or family? Christians, people family, people marriage that, equality. Yes. Uh, people that do want to support family units as it is and, fa and marriage as it is and of the biblical view of marriage. Well, what about the plebiscite? Hasn't that been, um, I mean, that was, the, uh, that, was a, um, that was done to appease the hard right, the conservative faction in the Liberal Party? Um, seeing as you're using the democratic process, you want to use it to get elected, are you willing to abide by a plebiscite? I think... What the issue with the plebiscite is, and when I talk about the voice for the voiceless, what's happened at the moment is any debate, any discussion uh, on the implications of a change in the Marriage Act or the change in the definition, the financial, social, economic, uh, in legal implications of these changes has not happened. We haven't had the discussion. And we need to have the discussion. We need to have the debate openly, Frank, we are having it, aren't honest. We? Yes, but the people need to have it. Well, and isn't that what a plebiscite's for? Exactly, and that's why we want the plebiscite. Because but you will abide by what, if the majority say yes, you'll agree with that? That is a conscious... If you were elected to the Senate, as might happen, you will agree with it? It's a conscious vote, and I would still have to abide by the policy of no, uh, marriage between a man and a woman, and it... The definition and the Marriage Act should be changed. However, that doesn't mean that, as in the ACT, 
the civil union act isn't possible. Okay, Jason, just final word on it then. How are you feeling your chances are looking uh, when you're out on the hustings? Uh, we're a good chance. We've done three years of hard work and there, we believe we're a wildcard chance for that last Senate seat in Victoria. And we um, are using the phrase marriage equality on the ballot paper because it's one of our key central platforms. And, and you know, um, I disagree with Nella, obviously, but every family in Australia deserves to be treated equally, irrespective of their sexuality and gender. Marriage is a civil right, religious marriage can still continue on as it's going. It's decreasing from less than 30% of the population get married inside churches nowadays. And there's no change for them. All it's going to do is make a whole stack of people across this broad land happier, mentally healthier, and make this country a kinder and gentler and safer place for everyone. And we think that's really important. Okay. And I say to everyone, you know, vote one for marriage equality this year in the federal election. Okay, just be even. Do you want to say vote one now of all the Christian, <laughs> vote one all Christian <laughs> Democratic Party? Only to be fair on that, and thank you both Jason and Nella. Now you know who yes, they yeah. are, what they are voted for, and they both hope they've got a good chance. So we'll see who we've got next week. Uh,